And as we come together today to worship our God, to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we too echo the words of that hymn that we've just sung. May our worship be a sweet, sweet song to your ear, O Lord. We are glad that you're joining with us in our worship time as we lift up our, the name of our God and the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we, we sing praises, we fellowship with each other, we gather at the Lord's table in communion, and we feed upon the Word of God. Thank you for joining with us today here at Harlandale. And as we think of uh, that, uh, I love you, Lord, may our worship be a sweet, sweet song. We think of the words of David in Psalm 119, verses one, verse 103, and he says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth, O Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence among us today, for your uh, ben benefits to us, for your provision for us, for your protection for us, but most of all, we thank you for your grace and your mercy for us. The salvation that you have purchased with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity we have to be in this house of worship to lift up your holy, your precious name. Thank you for those who are joining with us online because they're not able to, uh, to be in the house of worship with us. But as we join our hearts and our lives, we are here with one purpose, with one focus, to allow you to speak to us. And may our words, our thoughts, our lives be a sweet, sweet song of worship to you. Bless us, Father. Speak to us through our worship time today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail Oh
It's Lord's Day as we gather to worship. We set aside uh, usually a central p time in our worship service to gather at the Lord's table to share in this Lord's Supper, uh, partake of the unleavened bread and the cup, the fruit of the, the fruit of the vine. As we do so, we share in this communion table in remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These emblems, the bread, the cup, remind us of the sacrifice of the Son of God for our sins and for our peace and for our eternity in heaven. Our communion hymn today is, There's a Fountain Filled with Blood Drawn from Emmanuel's Veins. And it's said that this hymn was written by uh, William Cooper during a time of despair and discouragement and maybe even depression in his life. But in it he sensed only one, only one could bring him through could save him and could lift him up. This hymn is said to be based on Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 1 that Cooper had in mind when, when he wrote, There is a fountain. Zechariah says, On that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. And so he meditates upon the saving power of the blood of Jesus Christ to save him, to save us from sin, to save him from despair and discouragement and depression, to save us and lift us up and give us the hope of eternal life. So we'll sing as, uh, there is a fountain and partake of these emblems, this bread and this cup during this song and if you're joining with us from home we hope that you'll share in this communion time with us as well let's pray together father in heaven we thank you for this remembrance this communion this lord's supper in which we partake of this bread that reminds us of the body the flesh of jesus your son as he was nailed to the cross of calvary for our sins we partake of this cup, the fruit of the vine, that reminds us of the blood that Jesus shed to wash away our sins. Thank you for these emblems that remind us of your love, but also remind us of your hope and your presence each day of our lives, and the hope through the salvation that you've purchased through the blood of your son Jesus, our hope of an eternity with you. Bless us as we remember this and as we draw near to you through this time, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel. Plunged beneath that flood Lose all the guilty stains Lose all the guilty stains Lose all the guilty stains And sinners plunged beneath that flood Lose all the guilty stains Wash all my sins away Wash all my sins away Wash all my sins away And then may I, though vile as he Wash all my 
my sins away Dear dying lamb, your precious blood shall never lose its power Church of God, be safe to sin no more. Be safe to sin no more. Be safe to sin no more. Till all the ransoms, Church of God, be safe to sin no more. I saw the stream Your flowing wounds supply Redeeming love has been my theme And shall be till I die And shall be till I die And shall be till Well, it's sweet to know that when we find life to be too overwhelming, God offers us rest. When we find ourselves tired and burdened, sometimes it's because we've taken on a yoke or a burden or a way of living that comes from the world rather than from God. Living to please others can be crushing to us, but finding God is already pleased with us is a source of rest. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you for your rest, your peace, your comfort. Today we come to you with a willing heart and open hands, ready to receive that, that deep rest, that deep soul rest that you promised through Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Thank you for that, Father. We seek that through you, through your spirit, through your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm glad that you're joining with us today as we begin a new series of, of study. I'm thankful that you decided to worship with us here at Harlandale. Uh, we're calling this sermon series, Sweet Like Honey as we talk about the promises of God. And whether you're brand new to this whole Jesus thing or to Christianity, or if you've been walking with him for a long, long time, the reality is this truth, God keeps his promises. In fact, many of us 
here today in person and online can probably give so many examples of God's faithfulness. He has not let us down in the past, so there's reason to believe that he will keep his promises to us in the future. And friends, that's why we're here. The Bible says in Psalm 119-103, the passage of scripture that we began our worship time today, how sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. What imagery that is. What a picture that is. Sweet like honey. You know, it's so, so wonderful to think of God's words this way. Because honey is probably one of the sweetest things we could ever taste. When something is sweet and tasteful, we, we tend to go back to it. And God's desire is, the, is that we continually return to his word, especially in this message series this month. Conter, uh, continue to turn to his word to find his promises are trustworthy and true just as he is. So each week through this month of September, we're going to look at one of God's amazing promises for our lives and why it matters to us, because God is faithful. So to begin with today, if you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, and we'll get started. Here, Jesus is speaking. Listen today for what he promises. Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Wow. Now, how many of you have heard these words read and, 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 and audibly breathed a sigh of relief? We are a weary people. This weekend, we celebrate a holiday all, that we've put on our calendar that we call Labor Day, and we call it a day of rest from our labors. We're an overworked people. We're in desperate need for good, nourishing rest for our souls and for our bodies. Thankfully, as our passage for the day shows, we can find our much-needed rest in Jesus Christ. What a sweet sweet promise. There are three things I want us to pull out of this passage in particular, and here's the first one. The rest requires that we come. The rest requires that we come. Have you ever had a time when you were craving a certain restaurant to go eat or a certain food that you wanted, but in order to get it, you had to get up out of the chair you had to get out of your house you had to go get it yourself even in in our day and age you didn't have a delivery service that could bring it to you yeah i'm sure that many of us have felt from time to time like god is distant he isn't very close to us anymore but in reality maybe it has more to do with our reluctance to pursue him rather than the other way around Friends, all through Scripture, God desires to be close to his people. Come. Come for his rest. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, we read this in the beginning. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now you remember that this account is right after the first man and woman sin against God in the Garden of Eden. But did you catch where God was? In the garden. In the garden. He wants to be where his people are. So naturally Jesus calls us to come to him in Matthew 11. This means that in order to find rest for our weary souls, we have to be willing to walk toward God. Now, this looks like praying daily and inviting him to, to take us into his loving embrace. It, it, a, a life that comes to him for this rest is one that seeks to be closer to him. It also looks like a life 
filled with studying his word daily, inviting him to grant us greater knowledge about himself, about his plan, and reminding us of his promises daily. Friends, <clears throat> we must come to him. He is where we find true rest. David says in Psalm 91, 1, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Who do, he who dwells in the shadow of the Most High, in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. But what is it that keeps us from coming to God? Maybe for us, we claim we're too busy right now in this season, in this time, in this age, to, to pursue and to follow God. Maybe we have so much on our plate that we just keep neglecting our time with God on our priority list. I want to give you an illustration today to help clear this up for you. It could be the secret sauce to learning how to come to Jesus and find rest. On this piece of paper, I have a list of things that are very typical of my normal to-do list for a week, for a day. And on the other side of it, I have a blank sheet. This is God's priority today. The way to find rest is to allow the keeper and giver of rest, God himself, to make our priority list, to make our to-do list each day. Everything on the list will be reflective of his character and his desires in our lives. We can go ahead about our normal routines. We can, we can tackle some of the things that we've put on our own list. But with a Christ-like perspective, we can do what God wants us to do. And that begins with drawing, coming to him. And ultimately, we'll learn how to rest. We'll learn how rest requires us to actually come to God the source of rest. A second lesson from this passage in Matthew 11. This rest requires that we take. But what about when we get to God? After we make the decision to follow Jesus' command to come, we are invited to take. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Now, when I first read this passage, all I could think of was an egg yolk, and it sounded nasty. But let me clear this up for you today. Bailey McBride says a yoke is a, is a means of governing an animal and, and linking two or more animals for greater strength. We have to go to third world countries today to see a real yoke. And when I've seen these images, I can't imagine willingly taking on a yoke, that huge piece of metal and wood linking two animals together, beast of burden. But the idea is totally counter to my love of freedom, my, my, my desire for personal freedom. I want to do it all my way. I resist bondage. And to consider going under a yoke is a strength that challenge or stretch that challenges me. You see, friends, when we decide to willingly take Christ's yoke upon us, we are invited to lay aside our personal passions and desires, especially those of an immoral and sinful nature, the things of this world. The things of this world can no longer take priority. For many of us, Maybe this is the reason we haven't been able to find true rest yet. It's that same website or substance that keeps knocking on our door, wanting us to engage with it again. And when we do, we believe a lie that those things will satisfy our need for rest and fulfillment. But we learn over and over again that the world can only offer false hopes and false promises for true rest. Friends, only God can promise true rest for the weary soul. 
we have to come to the humbling conclusion that merely coming to Jesus is only step one in the process of finding rest. Then we must make the decision to give him whatever that is that's weighing us down. So my question for you today is, what's weighing you down? What's holding you back? What's the burden that keeps you down? Have you ever felt weighed down by something in this world that made you feel uncomfortable? Well, we have someone who can carry that burden for us. And in fact, the writer of the book of Hebrews in, in Hebrews 12, 1 says, we have witnesses who have already accepted that gift of carrying the burdens. Hebrews 12, 1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Friends, the scripture tells us that in order to find true rest, we have to throw off everything that keeps us from that rest. The things of this world are not even worth comparing to God's rest. He can provide it if we are willing to take it. So Jesus says, come, take. The third lesson from this passage this rest from Jesus requires that we learn. I would say rest requires we are willing to learn of Jesus. This is the final thing that Jesus teaches us in our Matthew 11 passage. He says, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. Have you ever ha did you ever have a teacher that you didn't like when you were growing up? Chances are they didn't have a good tone, a good personality, or they, you didn't like their teaching method. We all have examples in our lives of difficult teachers and, and tough learning environments. But on the flip side, it's easy to learn from someone who practices patience, humility, and gentleness. Well, friends, the good news is this. These are all qualities of Jesus, the Christ. And he asks us to let him teach us his ways. The beautiful thing about God, as we, as we talked about at the beginning of this message, is that he wants to go with us on this journey of life. And who better to learn from than the Son of God? He wants to be right there by our side every step of the way and through the power of the Holy Spirit of God within us, we can walk this way with him. Joshua says in Joshua 1, 9, back in the Old Testament, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, this was God's promise all the way back in the Old Testament to people like Joshua. In fact, this same promise is found many places all throughout the scriptures. And it culminates in one of the most amazing passages in all of the scriptures found in Revelation chapter 21. Listen to Revelation 21 and verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The book of Revelation lets us know where it all ends. God, the good teacher, he will be with his people in an extremely personal way forever and ever. But it's not just in the end. That's for us even now today. Right now, you and I can experience that sense of intimacy with our Heavenly Father. It comes through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us when we choose to follow His Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord, as our Savior. So what's holding you back? What's your burden? What's weighing you down? 
What's keeping you from Jesus and his divine rest and, and that deep soulful contentment in your life? Maybe it's time to go to him. Maybe it's time to take that first step of faith. You don't have to be perfect before you come to Jesus. You don't have to be prepared. You just have to be willing. Grab hold of that promise today. Grab hold of Jesus. Come, take, learn. And Jesus says, I will give you rest. Come, take, learn. Our song of decision and dedication today is one that, that helps us focus on what we're going to do. And it's, the, it's a song entitled, Draw Me, Draw Me Close. And it's a song that says, Lord, draw me close to you because I want to come to you. Draw me close to you because I want to take of your rest. Draw me close to you because I want to learn of your way and your rest. Will you make that your, par your prayer, your promise, your plea this morning? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your promises being sweeter than honey. Thank you for the promise that Jesus gave in Matthew 11 that, that he gives rest to us, to all who come, who take, who learn of his rest. Thank you, Father, for indwelling us with your spirit when we accept your Son as our Savior. Draw us close, Father. Teach us. Encourage us. Give us your peace and your rest. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel the warmth of 
Find the way.